priceless treasure. God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort. I am His and there's nothing better. Forgiven and chosen forever. I am a treasure. another treasurific day. I'm Gabby. I'm Rose. And, and we're, we're your adventure, adventure guides, guides today. today. We've been imagining what it's like to be on a big adventure-filled expedition searching for priceless treasures. When archaeologists and treasure hunters find something valuable, they usually don't keep it. Those things are so special that they end up in museums. But wouldn't it be cool to find a treasure and be able to give it to someone as a gift? Today we're talking about God's son, Jesus. Jesus was the best gift God ever gave us. As a thank you to God, we can love him and want to serve him. We even have a song about that. Let's, Let's sing it!
We're talking a lot about things that are found in the earth, in a cave, in the dirt, or under things. But let's look up for a minute. When we look up, we can see some pretty awesome treasures from God. God created diamonds and gold and gems deep in the earth, but he also made those incredible treasures we see in the sky. Let's celebrate our awesome God by singing, Sing Wherever I Go. Today you'll get to hear a true story about some people who discovered an even more valuable find inside a tomb. And that tomb was empty. The empty tomb was proof of God's power, love, and forgiveness. Today, we'll discover that God forgives you. You, you are our treasure. treasure. God's forgiveness shows his love for you and that you're priceless to God. Let's meet the Bible buddy who will help us remember that. Wow, look at all these priceless people. What a valuable find. This is Grace, a giant blue morpho butterfly. Check out her beautiful blingy blue wings. But to be honest, she didn't always look this lovely. After hatching, she grew into a fuzzy, fluffy caterpillar. Those bristly hairs would irritate your skin, which helped keeps her safe. Grace ate loads of leaves as a furry caterpillar. She got so big, that she shed her skin about four times. That's just how God made her. Finally, God put a little green shell-shaped cocoon around Grace. Then she just hung out in the rainforest for a couple of weeks. In fact, if you trekked through a rainforest from Mexico, through parts of South America, you might see rows of these bright green cocoons hanging from the underside of leaves. And then, voila! Look at her, what a transformation. She's completely new. Instead of crawling, Grace can float and flutter on her big, beautiful wings. You can see that the top side is shimmery blue, like the sky. 
That's actually reflecting the light and color from the sky. How cool is that? The underside is brown, so it blends in with the branches and leaves around her. That's just another way God keeps Grace safe. Her flashing, fluttering, multicolored wings make it harder for predators to keep track of where she is. Grace could just sing about her wings. When she stretches them out, they're about as wide as a grown-up's hand. Grace's life has changed so much from when she was a little fuzzy caterpillar. You may feel like growing up from a kid to an adult is the biggest change in your life but God can change you in ways you never imagined. See, when you make wrong choices, those hurt your friendship with God. But God treasured you so much that he made a way to change that forever. God sent his son, Jesus, to take the punishment for your wrongdoings. Now that those sins are paid for, you can have a new life forever with God. God's forgiveness makes you a new creation. The Bible celebrates God's loving forgiveness with these words. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry and rich in unfailing love. God loves you, forgives you, changes you. So if you're bugged by your bad choices and feel stuck in them forever, remember, that God's forgiveness can change you forever. God forgives you. You are treasured. Grace is a new creation, a flapping, fluttering reminder of the way God's forgiveness changes us. Link your thumbs together like this and flap your fingers like wings. You're going to fly through the day at Treasured. Enjoy your day at BBS and we'll see you back here for Closing Quest. Today, we'll hear about Jesus, God's own Son. God treasures you so much that He sent His Son, named Jesus, to be born and live on earth long ago. Jesus did amazing things because He had God's power. Let's dive into today's totally true Bible adventure. When Jesus lived on earth, He asked 12 men to join Him. These friends traveled with Jesus, which means they saw and heard incredible things. They heard Jesus teach, they saw Jesus heal sick people, use a bit of bread and a few fish to feed a crowd of thousands, and even bring people back to life. Jesus and his followers talked together, laughed together, and became close friends. And Peter was one of Jesus' best friends someone Jesus trusted and loved. And then, Peter did something friends are never, ever supposed to do, something that can break a friendship apart. Let me tell you about a couple of days in Peter's friendship with Jesus. To experience a bit of what happened, I need you to stand up and stand just a few feet away from the screen, almost close enough to touch it. You'll need to have some open space behind you. At the beginning of this true story, Jesus and Peter were close friends, like you and I standing near each other. As I describe what happened, decide if what Peter did could help a friendship, bringing people together, or hurt a friendship, moving people apart. If you think it would help a friendship, you'll take a step towards me. If it would hurt a friendship, take a step away from me. If it's so hurtful that it could break a friendship, take two steps away. If you end up moving all the way to the far wall behind you and you can't move any farther away, turn away from me and sit down. Jesus asked Peter and the rest of his friends to have a special meal with him in Jerusalem, and Peter came. Would that help, hurt, or break a friendship? After the meal, Jesus asked Peter and the other friends to pray with him in a garden, and Peter agreed. Would that help, hurt, or break a friendship? After the meal, Jesus asked Peter and the other friends to pray with him in a garden, and Peter agreed. Would that help, hurt, or break a friendship? 
move forward or back. But Peter and the other friends were tired, so instead of praying, they fell asleep. Forward or back? Peter woke up to find that soldiers had come to arrest Jesus. So Peter pulled out a sword to protect his friend Jesus. Would that help, hurt, or break a friendship? The soldiers led Jesus away, and Peter followed to find out what happened. As Peter waited for news, someone asked if Jesus was his friend, and Peter said, no. Move forward or backwards. Two more times, Peter told people he didn't even know Jesus. Move forward or backwards. Finally, Peter just ran away and left Jesus behind. Move one more time. Jesus let himself be battered and beaten and then nailed to a cross where everyone could see him die. Jesus was paying the price for all the wrong things people have done and it was a high price to pay. We're not sure if Peter was somewhere in the crowd watching, but if he was, he didn't try to help Jesus. Would that help, hurt, or break a friendship? After Jesus died, Peter and the rest of Jesus' friends hid in Jerusalem. There, they heard Jesus had come back to life, just as he said he would. Peter wondered if this could be true. Was Jesus alive? Okay, if you're not already seated, go ahead and sit down. Look at where you're sitting, how far you move from me. What word would describe Peter's friendship with Jesus based on how far apart we are? Say that out loud. Eight days later, Peter and most of the other followers gathered in a locked room when Jesus somehow walked in alive, alive. Maybe Peter wondered if his friendship with Jesus was too broken to repair. In many ways, he turned his back on Jesus. If that doesn't break a friendship forever, nothing will. A few days later, Peter and his friends were fishing when Jesus appeared again on the beach. Jesus spent time with Peter. They ate together and Jesus treated Peter as a friend. Jesus even gave Peter an important job to do to help others know and love him. Jesus forgave Peter for the wrong things Peter did. And when friends do things they shouldn't do, forgiveness heals what's broken. Jesus forgave Peter, and when we ask, Jesus will forgive us for the wrong things we do too. Turn around and move close to the screen again. Take that paper you got and cut it into a heart. I'll give you about a minute. Think about something a friend did that could have broken your friendship. Maybe your friend spread lies about you, ignored you, or told your secrets. As you think about that, tear that paper heart in half slowly. For me, I had a friend make fun of me in front of all my other friends. 
Think of your own story and slowly tear that heart in half. Like Peter, I've disobeyed Jesus. Like Peter, I've done wrong things. Like Peter, I've not always admitted that Jesus is my friend. If you're like Peter and you'd like God to forgive you for wrong things you've done, hold those pieces of your broken heart. The heart is broken, but forgiveness heals what's broken. Now it's your turn. Use tape to put that heart back together. As you do, quietly ask Jesus to forgive you for the wrong things you've done. Here's good news. When you come to God asking for forgiveness, God forgives you. You are treasured. Because Jesus paid the price for our sins, we can be forgiven and we can find the power to forgive others. Let's thank God for that. God, we're so thankful for your love and forgiveness. Both of those are bigger than we can imagine. Help us show your loving forgiveness to people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for visiting with me today. Come back tomorrow for another totally true adventure from the Bible. to Imagination Station. I'm super excited you're here today. We have lots to discover together, but 
before we go any further, you know I have to ask, did you bring your imagination today? Hmm, you all look a little tired, a little short on imagination, but never fear. I was just chatting with my pal Grace, the Morpho Butterfly. I think you met her earlier. Anyway, Grace told me something super cool about Morpho Butterflies. Don't you think butterflies like Grace are so beautiful? It's hard to imagine they could have any yucky characteristics. But here's something you might not know. Morpho butterflies can be quite stinky. When they're threatened, they send out a terrible odor from a gland located by their front legs. That awful stink keeps predators and other trouble away. That's pretty amazing. Those seemingly perfect creatures can make quite a stink. And that makes me think of how you and I react when something stinks. P.U. When I count to three, plug your nose and yell, P.U. One, two, three. P.U. Now I can see your imaginations are awake and fresh. So let's find out today's talk starter question. Okay, here's today's question. Just like you and me, morpho butterflies grow up. But do you think morpho butterflies grow up to be about eight inches across or about eight centimeters across? Talk about that with whoever is watching right now. Okay, time for the drum roll so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is, Morpho butterflies can grow up to be eight inches across. That's this big, huge. Today, we're discovering that God forgives you. You are treasured. God loves us and sent his son Jesus to take the punishment for the wrong things we do. So when we make wrong choices, that's not the end for us. We can tell God we're sorry and ask for his forgiveness, and he gives it to us willingly. That makes me so happy because I'll tell you a little secret. I'm not perfect. I mess up and make wrong choices. We all do. Give me a thumbs down if you've ever made a wrong choice. It's true. When we mess up, it's easy to feel like we're unforgivable. But what we think isn't always what's true. I'll show you what I mean. Take a look at this. Does it look like those lines are wavy or straight? Hmm. I think you might need to check the lines to be sure. If you put a straight edge like a ruler or a book against the screen, you'll see that the lines are straight. Let's try another one. Look at this image. Which dot in the center is bigger? Again, I'm not sure you can believe your eyes. If you used a ruler to check, you'd see that both dots are the exact same size. An optical illusion is an image that plays tricks on our brains. We see an image and our eyes process that image and send it to our brains. But the image sends a confusing message that makes what we perceive or think we see different from what's really on the paper. These optical illusions are like what sometimes happens when we make wrong choices. We may feel like we've messed up so badly, but the way we see things isn't real. God forgives us, you are treasured, and he loves us even when we mess up. Today's sciency fun gizmo is called a twirly gig. 
If you watch carefully, you'll see that this twirly gig isn't only what you see at first. The twirly gig is a great reminder about God's love for us. He could only see our mistakes, but God looks at the whole picture of us, what's in our hearts. He sees so much more about us than only our mistakes. Take a look at the picture. These twirly gigs create an optical illusion where your brain sees both images on the paper and combines them when the images are rotated very quickly. You'll get to play with your own twirly gigs now. You'll tie a piece of string to each side of the paper disc. Pinch the end of each string between your index finger and thumb through the hole and tie a small knot. Do the same on both sides. When you spin your twirly gig, remember that God sees all of you, the mistakes and the wonderful things he put in you. Inside your twirly gig kit, you have two pre-printed cards. One with a partial picture of a butterfly on each side, and one with a partial picture of a face on each side. You also have a blank disc. 
Take a few minutes and draw part of a picture on one side and the rest of the picture on the other side. For example, I drew a fish bowl on one side and the fish on the other. Just remember that one of them has to be upside down since the card flips over when you twirl it.
Now, you'll put your Try This at Home sticker on a bag so you can remember to show your twirly gigs to your families and friends. Everyone needs to hear about God's forgiveness and love. Come back tomorrow for one last Imagination Station sensation. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you here at Kid Vid Cinema again. Today, we're going to watch a special story about another real kid just like you. I can't wait to hear all about God's forgiveness. Today, in the video, you're going to meet two brothers, Philip and Timothy. Like most siblings, sometimes Philip and Timothy have fun together, and sometimes they don't get along. We're going to hear about one time they got really mad at each other. But at the end of the day, just as Philip forgave Timothy, God forgives you. You are treasured. God won't hold a grudge for the wrong things you've done. He wants a friendship with you. Hi, I'm Philip and I'm 13. Hi, I'm Timothy and I'm nine. Philip and Timothy love playing outside. They like hanging out with their chicken. Oh, and they like playing music together. Three, four. But what Philip and Timothy really love is Legos. My favorite Lego sets would probably be my Striking Venom Lego set, my Aero Force one, my Republic tank, and the walker I built by myself. This is one is Emperor Palpatine's shuttle. This one was a present from Timothy. This one's Lego Space Police. This one Timothy bought me for Christmas. This one is Power Miners. This yeah. is Big Daddy's um. Spaceship. This is General Grievous' speeder. This right. one's also Space Police. This one is Exoforce. I modified it. And these are little punching robots. Go, 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 go! Oh! oh! I think he lost a piece. It sure looks like Philip and Timothy have lots of fun with their Legos. But when Philip got his first Lego set for Christmas, it was anything but fun. So, on Christmas morning, I woke up at 8 in the morning. After we ate, we read the Bible, and then we went to open presents. I opened all of my presents, and the best one was a little Lego set. It was about this big. After I'd finished it, I started parading it around the house. I'm like, da 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 I went to put it on my shelf where my little brother couldn't get it. And so, while I was away, Timothy was hard at work. I saw my brother's Lego set, and I really wanted to play with it, but he wouldn't let me. So I went into his room and uh, broke it. When I returned, my little brother was sitting there on the ground with an innocent smile on his face. Yeah. And so, my face turned red with rage. I almost blew up. I think he went steam engine mode and started going woo -woo. And that was the end of my Lego set. Ooh. I think it's important to forgive people because carrying a grudge is like carrying an anvil on you. you know, eventually, if you carry it for too long, you're gonna be like, no, 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 and you're gonna fall on your back and it's going to crush you. It's easier to just like let it go, move on, so you're not carrying the anvil, and so your spirit isn't tired every day. You know, so you have more um, spiritual capacity. It felt really good that he forgave me for breaking that Lego set. You want to forgive people because if you don't forgive them, they can move away from you. You will have a very bad relationship with them, um, and that can end up hurting you. It can be hard to forgive people when they hurt our feelings or hurt our things. And sometimes you may be the one who needs forgiveness. It's good to know that it's never too hard for God to forgive us. God has the power to forgive. 
In the Bible, the book of Nehemiah says, But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. Always remember, God forgives you. I love my brother, so I treat him well. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. God forgives you. You are treasured. Today's bunny's name is Grace. Isn't she cool? I love the color she is. She started out as a caterpillar, but she turned into an amazing, beautiful butterfly. That reminds me of the new life you have because God forgives you. You are treasured. Grace's name is very special too. Grace is a word that we use to describe how God forgives us, even though we don't deserve it. So Grace the butterfly can remind us of God's grace and his forgiveness. On the bottom of Grace is the Bible verse. But you are a God of forgiveness. It's short on there. And on the poster it reads, but you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. Boys and girls, I had another fun day to you, with you today at Kidvid Cinema, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Welcome to day four of Closing Quest. We hope you had fun flying through your day today at Treasured VPS. Today, you discovered that God forgives you. You are treasured. Our Bible memory buddy Grace is a big, beautiful butterfly who reminds us of the new life we have because of Jesus. God loves us more than we can imagine. You might even say that God is wild about us. Let's sing a song about that. for today. We'll be back for more adventures tomorrow, our final day at Treasure VBS. Let's stand and sing our theme song to close out the day. See you tomorrow!
priceless treasure. God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort. I am His and there's nothing better, forgiven and chosen forever.